Hi guys, this is Kendall, and I'm going to talk to you briefly about a topic that I think can trip a lot of people up on an exam, and that is sex linkage. Sex-linked inheritance patterns are different than inheritance on genes carried by autosomes. So how can we figure out whether a trait is sex-linked? Well, first we need to know what the definition of a sex-linked trait is, and that is a trait that is controlled by a gene or allele located on the sex chromosome, which we know is the X or Y chromosome. So, knowing that sex-linked traits are located on the sex chromosomes, we should intuitively know that these traits will be inherited differently than genes on any of the other chromosomes. The question we should ask ourselves when trying to decide if a trait is sex-linked is, do the results of the cross differ if the genotype is inherited from mom or dad? For normal autosomal genes with simple dominance, we would expect no difference in results whether mom or dad carry the gene. However, if the gene is sex-linked, we would see something different. And this process of determining whether results differ if mom or dad has the genotype is called a reciprocal cross. So providing some background information, Thomas Hunt Morgan was a scientist that demonstrated the first reciprocal cross by first crossing a wild-type female with red eyes with a white-eyed male with a recessive trait and then with a wild-type fe with a white-eyed female with a wild-type male. And what he discovered in this first cross here was a 3 to 1 ratio of red eyes to white eyes which is the, displays normal dominance pattern for a recessive trait. However, Morgan noted that only males were affected with the trait in all of the crosses that he did, which led him to hypothesize that the trait is lethal in females. So to check himself, he then crossed a white-eyed female with a wild-type male, and the results that he found differed with what he hypothesized. So he saw an affected male in the F1 generation, and then an affected female and an affected male in the F2 generation. So this showed that the trait is not lethal in females because we see an affected female. In addition, because we have an affected male in F1, he had to have gotten his X chromosome from the female, which means that the trait is X-linked. So making some generalizations now, if a trait is X-linked, it will not pass from father to son. A father can only pass the gene to his daughters, and if a female expresses the trait, she will pass it to 100% of her sons, while a heterozygous mother passes the trait to 50% of her sons. But the big point here is that there are more males than females affected in an X-linked trait, because males only have one X chromosome, so any recessive allele that they inherit will be expressed, and X-linked traits often skip generations. However, if a trait is Y-linked, these are easier to determine because the traits only pass from father to son. In addition, these traits do not skip generations. So memorizing these generalizations is pretty simple, but when you're trying to put it all together for a practice problem, that's when it can get kind of difficult. So I'm going to read you this problem, and then I'm going to wait a minute for you guys to answer it, and then we'll go over it. So, you are studying a mutation in Drosophila, that causes the flies to move in an uncoordinated manner. You have created a fly that shows the phenotypes of both this recessive mutation and the X-linked opal eye mutation. Design an experiment to test whether this new mutation is also on the X chromosome. What would you expect if it is? What about if it's not? So I'm going to give you guys a minute while I write the answer up and then we'll go over it.
Okay, so coming back together now, we're going to go over this question. So first, we need to answer the question of what we're going to do if it's sex-linked. So whenever we see a determination of sex linkage, we're going to use the term reciprocal cross. Next, we're going to give a brief explanation of what a reciprocal cross is, and that's when we're going to cross a wild-type female and affected male with a wild-type male and affected female. If the trait is X-linked, we're going to see more males than females affected. We can go back to our generalizations that we memorized. So more males than females, passes generations, affected mother passes to 100% of sons. And then if it's autosomal, we expect equal number of males and females affected, and this will display normal dominance patterns. So I hope that you were able to work through that. I hope that that was easy for you. And I wanted to end with some tips for you guys. So make sure to answer all parts of free response questions. Dr. P likes to include multiple questions within one larger question. And if you forget to answer one part of it, that's just losing unnecessary points. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, be prepared for scenario questions. She also likes to ask a lot of scenario questions, whether it involves what kind of cross you're doing, what your expected results are. You're bringing together multiple concepts. That's the point of these scenario questions. So make sure you're prepared for those. So I hope this video was helpful, and I wish you the best of luck on your exam.